Hi guys, uh, my name is Neil Ball from ASCAD Services. Uh, some of you may know me from my time with Great Tech UK as an advanced deal uh, software specialist. I noticed that uh, Great Tech have released their Power Pack 2018. They've got quite a useful tool in there, which is a header beam joint. Now I've got a particular interest in that joint because I proposed it to the developers a couple of years ago. It's taken them two years to get around to it, but they've added the joint now. A lot of my London customers were always asking. So what I did in the interim, I wondered if I could do the joint using the advanced still tools. Now I don't have the power pack. I don't intend having the power pack. Um, so I'm going to show you what I came up with to do this using the standard tools in advanced still. So let's do some construction first. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to add a column. Stick it at zero, zero. Good practice, as we all know. I'm going to rotate the column. Let's go back the other way. Okay, so I've got system line top. I've got it on this edge of the, the, the column. The only reason I've done that is just for alignment. It's going to make my life a little bit easier. But it will work exactly the same wherever we have that aligned. Now, something interesting. I'll just show you this. I put the column in using the column macro there. So if I look at the naming of it, it automatically calls it column. A lot of people don't even know this exists. There you go. Look, column. It's put a three meter long column in or high column. The reason it's done that is there's a setting in management tools to set the default height for columns. So that's it. But the interesting thing is it's put it on a column layer and you haven't got that. You haven't got the column layer in your system. It's part of the uh, implementation that I offer my customers. This is just one of the things I do. I set up a column layer. If I draw a column using any of the macros. So for instance, if I were to use the portal frame macros, anything here, anything that puts a column in using a macro driven command, it will automatically put it on the column layer. Now, if I drew a manually, drew a column in manually, I can change the model role. I can do all those things. It won't automatically put it on the column layer. This is macro driven. Of course, I can still move. If I drew a column, I can move it manually onto onto the column layer. But it's quite handy, really, because I can separate the columns from the beams in my model. If I use select all and select the columns, it'll only select the columns, not all the beams as well. Anyway, that's an aside. Let's get on with the job. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a header beam in here. Just going to drag one out. 254146. Naming. OK, let's call it something. I'm going to call it a rafter. Right. Now, this is where a bit of lateral thinking comes into it. We haven't got a tool that will do this header joint particularly successfully. I, I can mess around. I can use I can use some some of the joints in here. So, but what I came across was well, let's have a look at this one. This is Eve's haunch to flange, and of course. The selection for that would be to select the column first, select the rafter second, and it'll put the end plate in, it'll put the uh, the haunch in, etc. But let's think about this. What if we use that joint, but we put it in back to front? So when we select the column, we select the rafter. And when we select the rafter, we select the column. Oh, there we go. So what it's done, it's put a plate on here. The plate is welded to the top of the column, which is what I want. Um, it's got the, uh, the haunch in here. So the first thing we probably want to do is turn that off. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but you've, you've got the option here to make it out of plates or profile, but you've also got none. So in the joint, you can turn the haunch off. So we're going to change some other settings in this, and we're going to turn this into my header beam joint. So let's go to the end plate first thing. 12, 20 mil is a bit much. Let's make this 12 mil. I've got exact values here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to projection. And let me go into a realistic view. You probably see this a little bit better. There we go. So look, this 15 mil. So let's have a go into the, um, sorry, let's go into here, end plate. I've got this 15 mil projection. You can see that. You can see the plates hanging over the, the column by 15 mil there. So we're going to make this zero. Now this next bit, I could do the maths. So depending on how much overhang I want in this plate, I can do the maths. So I've got 254 there, the overhang here, I've got 108.6. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to guess this a little bit. Let's say 200 mil off offset there. Well, that gives me plenty of room for four bolts. I can make that a bit more accurate, but that's good enough for what we want to do today. Now, the plate width, I've got exact value here. I can make this projections, and if I make this zero and zero, it's exact width. So there we go. Okay, so exact width. Let's have a look at the bolts and welds. 20 mil bolts, we're okay with that. Let's do bolts on gauge line to start with. And let's have a look at the bolt groups. I could have two bolt groups here. I could have a set of bolts here and a set of bolts there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we put just one set of bolts at this end. So I don't need the second bolt group. The first bolt group I'm happy with, but the start distance is 75, 75 from there to there. And we want the bolts up here somewhere. So it's 254 plus a bit. I'm going to say plus a bit. I'm not, uh, not absolutely sure. I could do the maths, but um, we'll guess. I'm going to guess 300 is going to be about right. So there it is. There's my bolts, and of course we can invert the bolts. As I said, if we had more than one bolt group, I could also have four, six, however many bolts I want in here. So we've got full control, exactly the same as we would have in the haunch joint. So what are we going to do now? We need a cap plate on here. And of course we do have one in the macro. It says none and it's greyed out. Oh, what's stopping that? Here's where it says column not trimmed. We're going to click on there. This now becomes available. So we're going to put a cap plate on by value. And it's going to put some default values in. There it is. And if you remember, I'm going to do that 12 mil thick. The same as the uh, header plate there. Now the plate length. We're going to we're going to sort of guess this a little bit. I, as I said, you can do the mass 254 plus whatever. So let's say 500 just for a figure the width we know that the beams 254 by 148 so i'm going to make this 145 or again i could make it 150 round it up or down it's up to you what you do now the plate gap there look five mil gap it says here five mil gap what if i put a minus value in so if i do minus 255 there we are i've moved the plate down got a little bit of a problem here the plate is actually colliding with the column but what we need to do there we just put a column extension on by the plate thickness so if we said 12 mil it'll now move this out okay so there it is now if I look at the way this is set up if I click on here you can see that the cap plate and the rafter are one assembly which is how I would want it and if I look the other way I've got the cap plate and the column. So second assembly, so all is well in the world. Of course, within this joint, I can use stiffeners exactly the same. So let's go here. Let's use stiffener two. Let's do a full stiffener. So there we are. There's my stiffener. I could do a slope stiffeners. I don't like to put this in because there's always that collision there, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, and you can go into the slope stiffener properties and you can fiddle about until you lose the uh, will to live. So I generally don't do that. I'll put a standard stiffener. If I wanted a diagonal stiffener, I'll put it manually on that. It's never worked properly. So if anybody knows any different and wants to tell me what I'm doing wrong there, they can, uh, they can email me, of course. Now, the only thing I can't do within this macro are these bolts here. But... That's just a small trade-off really. There's a couple of ways I could do that. I could go into my objects ribbon. I can change the UCS. So I can do UCS object on the end plate and I could put the set of four bolts in. I can do that. Much easier way of doing that is to use these tools. These are the custom connection tools, pretty much overlooked by most people. But the good thing about it is it will actually put the bolts in as a part of a macro. So if I wanted to turn this into a custom connection, that's probably the best way to do it. I've got bolts on beam. I can do that. Well, knowing that we put these bolts on gauge line, there is another tool there and it says bolts on beam gauge line, strangely. Uh, so I'm going to select the beam and it says, do you want to select connecting objects? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. And this is the connecting object. Sorry, this one. Might have screwed that up. I have to do that again. Just bear with me. Select the right things. Yes. And I'm going to select this plate. So there are my bolts. And it says 
one side, bolt location one side, so that's one side of the flange there. Look. I'm going to say both sides. And the intermediate distance, this is the vertical distance. Let's say we're going to do that to 80 mil. There. I can't remember what these were on here. I'd do them the same. But anyway, there we go. Now the start distance is 50 mil from the top of the beam to there. Look. And I want to drop them down here. I'm going to guess a distance again. I'll leave you to work that out. But there it is. There's my joint. Done. So I don't need the, I uh, didn't need the power pack and all the problems that come with that. What I've done, I've used the tools within advanced steel. And I've done a perfectly acceptable, usable header beam joint. So this is what my customers wanted. Just a bit of lateral thinking, guys. Just because the joint says it does one thing, try it in different orientations, try selecting things in different orders. You know, they have to give something a name. Eve's haunch to flange. But you can see I've used it in this uh, this situation here. So there it is. I uh, hope you um, you enjoy that. And uh, until next time, I'm off to get a cup of coffee. And uh, until next time, um, have a good day.